Good morning, fellow woodlot owners and other interested parties. As you know from that introduction, my name is Luther Sears, and my wife Joyce and I were the winners of the 2021 Woodland Owners of the Year for the Central Region. So there's lots of experts here, and this is my first. So there's lots of experts here, and this is my first time attending a, a Woodland conference. So I don't know what you expect, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about my own experience and, and uh, my woodlot. So a bit of history of our woodlot. It is located in Moose River on the banks of the Moose River, which is a, a tidal river, and on the shores of the Minas Basin. <clears throat> My father and I purchased the original piece back in 1999 and uh, I bought most of that back from him and I've added a couple of other adjacent woodlots since. So it's now uh, just over 300 acres. I've always, as I'm sure most of you, enjoyed the woods when I, whether to go for a walk, cut some firewood or logs, do a patch of thinning and watch it come back over the years. I was quite naive when I first started. I had a chainsaw and a spacing saw, a tractor with a logging winch, and uh, I did most of my own civiculture for the first few years. In 2012, Athel Forestry in Amherst did a forest management plan for me. And in 2012, they oversaw pre-commercial thinning on three stands covering about six hectares. In 2013, a commercial thinning was done in about 15 hectares. That, part, that particular stand uh, looked very nice when it was completed, but over the following years I did have uh, quite a bit of blowdown, which I have kept the commercially viable part of it cleaned up. After that, it has been mostly pre-commercial thinning on multiple stands. Okay, did you want to change your slides? Yeah, you don't want to look at me much longer. <laughs> I was going to have a little talk about my pictures, but I'll look at you a little bit. There, try that for a little while. <laughs> The woodlot has uh, good access with a private entrance uh, through a gravel pit, which is good for maintaining the road. There's also two small shale pits along the road. Before we got the land, the road had just been scraped for years and the water kept running down it and washing it out. And I have a back plate on my tractor, a mini excavator, and uh, they have most of it now crowned up and ditched. It's about two kilometer of road. The boundary lines, two of the boundary lines are easy. One is the banks of the Moose River and the other the shore and the shores of the Minas Basin. The other ones I have mostly blazed and painted, but it's almost time to do them again. As you know, it doesn't take long for them to grow in. We have identified about 35 different stands. There's some older plantation, 40 years or so, some newer plantation and a lot of mixed woods. About half of the woodlot was once owned by the Scott Paper Company and saw extensive harvesting and high grading. The other half was owned by a local family, <clears throat> saw some harvesting and a small amount of silviculture. On my management plan improvement guide, I have multiple treatments which include pre-commercial thinning, commercial thinning, shelter wood harvest, crop tree release, and some are leave, leave as they are for wildlife corridors, property buffers, water courses, and walking trails. When I go in and cut my annual load of studwood and firewood for myself and family, and try to cut mostly balsam fir and leaf, the spruce and the long-lived hardwoods. It's starting to look quite nice in those areas clean up the blowdowns and cut trails for the next winter's harvest. 
I try to leave every long list species I can unless it's really in the way. For myself, this is highly gratifying work. Receiving the award and hosting the field day in October was a bonus. It has been a good experience for me. I'm always trying to learn more and experiment a little bit in my cuts. Plus, I don't know, is Craig Cupper here today? Probably not. Anyways, he's off the hook now, as I told him. I told him when uh, we first met and walked the land that someday I wanted to be a winner of a forestry award. <laughs> and I wanted to have one of those big wooden blocks. <laughs> and now I'm going to have a little bit of a power point to show you, show you a few pictures of my little piece of heaven. A little share back there again, I guess. Yeah. Okay, just sitting on the cabin. It's all. It's not all work. <laughs> sitting and relaxing with my granddaughter at the cabin. Cabin, cabin we built in 20, 2001. I enjoy the family get-togethers, campfires, rock hounding, digging for clams, hunting for fossils, and of course walking the trails. This is the picture of the front of the cabin. Cabin, no running water, a compost toilet, just the way we like it. I did install a small solar panel for lighting, and it faces towards the beach with a view of five islands. There, there's my view. There's a view of two islands. So you just have, you do have to go right out to the cliff to see two islands. But. Five islands in the beach. That, that is a great spot to read a book. It doesn't even have to be a good one without you. <laughs> we have a small shelter there to uh, get out of the sun or the rain. That is Moose River at low tide. And those are the remains of the wharfs of the Moose River Mills Company, circa 1836. Just keep this picture in your mind. I'll show you a picture at high tide where most people are really amazed at the difference. This is another picture of low tide looking up the river from my wood, towards my woodlot. Hard to believe that those wars have been withstanding the tides for 186 years. Another partial tide, the river's just starting to come up. That's high tide. That's actually taken from a drone when we were uh, planning our our event in October. Yes, it is the same river, and the wharfs are all underwater. It's another picture I had of the the drone showing the uh, showing the cliffs and the beach and some of the woodlot. Switch it up here now. This is uh, last winter, heading for the landing with my load of first deadwood. This is my usual tractor setup, forks on the front, and they're quick attached, so uh, I'm gonna cut in some hardwood, I'll put the bucket on and take it out all pre cut. Set of ice chains on the front. Great for traction, so I do have some wet areas and hilly areas. And my custom chainsaw holder there that I built, so you always know where it is. Of course, I would run over if I could get that new one today. <laughs> uh, Farmy logging winch on the back and six chokers. And uh, you can't see it in the picture, but I built a the full length belly pan under that with the co some quarter inch sheet aluminum that I had so protects the underneath. 
Another picture of the lotus deadwood, sometimes tree length, but usually cut to eight or sixteen eight, so they don't mark up the trees along the edge of the, the trails as much. And uh, a little bit of snow cover, great weather for frozen extraction trail. There's some wet areas on the way out. Enough snow to keep the logs clean. There I am at it. There I am at the landing. Dropping my long length and heading to the pile to get rid of the stud wood on the forks. That's where we park most of the cars on our field day. Infrastructure at the river. This is one of the very few pictures I have and they've been able to find with the heyday of Moose River. And I like, I'm going to read you a little article from a magazine, an old magazine called uh, Wind, Tides and Horsepower. An, an ambitious establishment emerged on the north shore of the Minas Basin, about six miles east of Parisboro on the Moose River. In 1836, James R. Smith and Hugh Hartshorn obtained permission to build a dam across the tideway in the Moose River so they could erect tide mills for sawing boards. By 1839, they had built dams, sawmills, wharves, and other buildings. And on March the 30th, after 12 months in operation, the mills were incorporated as the Moose River Mills Company. By 1840, the whole grand establishment was for sale, <laughs> including a shipyard, store, blacksmith shop, rigging lofts, and tide mill. And the remains, you can find the remains of almost all of that today. Um, we're losing a little bit of the, the wood structures, but uh, I mean, that's certainly not there, but uh, just the, the rock piles and, and, and uh, the slipways from the shipyard are all still there. That's the woodlot owner of the year central, Joyce and I, at the river. This picture was taken uh, on the spit when we were planning our, they were planning our field day. That's the big day presentation of the award. Don, Simon, Rory, Joyce and I. And Ace. Ace is always in the picture. <laughs> the proud family the proud family picture. So as you saw there at the landing where I, where I had my uh, deadwood pile, that's where we parked for this field day. It rained the night before, it was a little slippery around there, but uh, the sun came out, we had a beautiful day. Um, and what we did, we, we, were at, we started at the landing, we walked through some of my trails, through the woods, down along the river, and ended up at the, at the beach. So this is one of the one of the first stops on the field day. It's my uh, first experience with commercial thinning. Um, we did have some blowdowns, but I keep them cleaned up as best I can. Um, it was a 15 hectare piece that we did in 2014. Um, anyways, it, it looks looks really nice in there. And wildlife. Well, that's. He's not very wild, but <laughs> another one of those stops. Um, we have typical wildlife there, uh, deer, coyote, fox, hare. Um, we have seen moose tracks there, but I, I haven't seen a moose there yet. Um, lots of birds, grouse, eagles along the shore. Friendly bear, or I think he was friendly. As close as I got he was, anyways. There's an eagle. We have lots of eagles. They do flounder fish there on the off the spit, and when they 
after they fill them and leave the remains, there's they've always lost eagles around. Uh, that's a pre-commercial thinning from 2013. Um, uh, I was uh, I was quite naive, quite a rocky when I first started. And uh, anyways, I walk through these areas now and realize my spacing was quite tight in areas. Um, we've formally done 25 hectares of pre-commercial thinning, and I've done other small patches uh, throughout. Biodiversity. Well, there's a lot of experts here on that today, so I uh, I try and uh, and uh, you know keep keep that, all that in mind when I'm when I'm doing any work or, or just walking through. Um, but we have our eagles, we have our lady slipper and some ferns. So it's it's all connected, as as you guys are well aware. We have some uh, older growth weed along the river, uh, and there's a, some few steep ravines. There's some older growth in there that is, has been cut. Um, and I always like to leave uh, any cavity trees, snags, and, and whatnot. And uh, I've dug a small pond uh, along the road, and, uh, and uh, there's lots of wildlife there, too. And... Uh, and most of my, my patch cuts are, are very are very small. Trillium there. One of my one of my favorite spots on, along the walking trail, the birches. And we thinned some of that in, in twenty fifteen. Another stop along the the field day walk. Um, Alpha Forestry. Alpha Forestry has been very good to me um, on this woodlot. This is, uh, they did a little pre commercial thinning there, a little demonstration. Tell you a, a, a quick story. Two weeks ago, where there was no snow around here, and uh, I the dog and I headed to Moose River, and the closer we got, the more snow there was. And anyways, we had quite a bit of blowdown this winter. Well, we've had some high winds, and uh, anyways, we walked some of it, but it was really, it was really hard going. And erosion. Uh, we usually get a small rock slide or two, but this year we had some really large ones along the shore. Um, the only good thing about that picture is there, there might be some fossils in there to find now. <laughs> uh, the sign proudly hung in the cabin. Hopefully you can see it there. <laughs> this is uh, one of the treatment map from my forestry plan. 35 different stands identified. We have done some type of silviculture work on about half of that and uh, most of trails through them are, are close by. That's my granddaughter trucking through the woods. That's the future of your woodlots right there. <laughs> so, Don, I don't know if that was the 20 minutes you wanted, but uh, I'll, I'll take a few questions now, I guess.